Hello there, Rich here. This is a video on basic Firefox customization. Now it is under the assumption by geeky people that everybody knows how to customize Firefox. No, that's not true. There's a lot of people that don't know how to do it, and to be honest, it is a bit confusing at first. It's real easy to say, oh yeah, it's totally easy. Well, when you do it a few times, then oh, okay, it's easy, but until that point, not really. Anyway, this is the way the default uh, button set looks. Uh, let me load a site up here, PC Mac. Now you notice that there's a red button that appears when a site is loading, and then that's the stop button. And when it a site is done loading, it turns into a refresh button. This confuses the crap out of people sometimes, but that is where the, the stop button did not disappear. It actually is still there, but it's only there when a site is actually loading. So anyway, on to the customizations here. Um, it's most likely true you want to make Firefox sort of kind of look like 3.6 did. This is Firefox 4 that you're looking at right now. So we will hop to that. Um, actually, the first thing I'll show is that a lot of people don't know that you can, if you take your mouse after the address bar and before the search bar, notice my cursor when I put it here, it changes to a horizontal left and right arrow. If you left and click, you can drag this back and forth. Now this is nothing new, this is old, but it amazes me how many people still don't know you can do that. So yes, you can do that, you can make the search bar really huge if you want to, or not, or whatever. So that's the first thing. Um, the easiest way that I find to get to the customization section is to go between the area of uh, back and forth and the address bar, which is this little space right here, right click and left click customize. Or alternatively, I think you can do it from here. I think. Is it under options? No. I'm sh positive there's another way to do it. I can't think of it off the top of my head anyway. So I right click here, I go to customize. Now, the first thing I'll show you is what I call the panic button, which is restore default set. Let's just say you majorly screw up and everything is just gone and let's just say you're left with that oh my god no address bar no search bar no buttons oh my god what do I do well right click customize and restore default set that there's your panic button your your uh, safe haven if you will and yeah you can really mess with somebody <laughs> by doing that don't do it not unless they deserve it. No, no, seriously, don't do it. Because um, you don't want to make their browser, their Firefox browser unusable. But anyway, there is your panic button. It restores ex everything to default. So if you do default, uh, restore default set, that's what it will do. Now, the confusing part comes in the fact that people don't realize that you can drag things in and out of this window while it is open. Yes, it's confusing when you first see this, but after you get used to it a couple of times, oh, okay, I get it, so everything goes in and out from this box to outside the box. Not exactly the most intuitive way, but um, Firefox has always been like that, so that's essentially the way it is. Also, when this window is open, you can move things around wherever you want. Now, uh, another source of confusion is, you'll, now notice this area right here, after the uh, address bar, it shows regular reload and stop button, but when I close this, it changes it into this uh, combination thing. I don't personally agree with that maneuver by um, Mozilla when they did that, because it looks one way when you have the window open and another way otherwise. So, a, a source of confusion, but that's the way it is. So, anyway, right click customize, and you see it changed. Now what a lot of people want to do is they want to make this look like Firefox 3.6 which means you take these buttons and simply drag and drop them over to the uh, left. So I'll take the home button which is already here. Let's just say it wasn't here and say it was gone for whatever reason. It would be whatever is not here is in this window. So I will go to home and drag it and put it after the uh, forward button and then I will take reload and put that after home and put the stop button after that and actually I don't I think it was supposed to be like this where it's home stop reload yeah I think that's the way it was originally 
not quite sure, but I think that's the way it was. You can organize it however you wish. Um, now, there was also this nice little orange chiclet, which uh, signified an RSS feed. And that's not here by default, but in here there is a button called subscribe, uh, which is the same function. And you can drag that right after the address bar, and you've got your little chiclet back, and I'll show how that works in a second. Um, and then you can take your bookmarks bar, uh, yeah, bookmarks button if you want. I don't suggest taking it away, you might want to leave that here, because it is actually quite functional, but if you wanted to, you can take that away. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the activity indicator, this is, you know, the little roundy thing that happens, uh, the animation, when a site is loading, you can take that and put it after I think, yeah, put it after the uh, search bar so it has that little roundy thing that turns. Some people miss that. Now you don't have to necessarily have this here because when a tab is loading there actually is an animation in the tab. So, but I'll leave it here anyway just to make it look as close to Firefox 3.6 as I can. And essentially I'm done with this. Now the only thing left, if I wanted to, is I could add in the uh, menu bar. The way to do that is pretty simple. Just right click anywhere in a blank area where there's no tab and left click menu bar and you got this thing back. People like this because the bookmarks is right here. Now if I do a refresh you'll now you should be an animation in the tab which there is but you'll notice I have an animation also on the right side so if you're used to having the animation on the right side you saw me drag and drop it here and yeah that's more or less it. Now there's a few other things we can do here of course there's tabs on top you can change that to have tabs on the bottom if you want. This is actually pretty cool because it takes the buttons and puts them, uh, for those of you that have Windows Vista in 7, such as I do, you see it actually makes them transparent at that point. That's actually pretty darn sweet. I actually really like that a lot. Let me get rid of the menu bar here. That just looks, you know, a little more modern. You see some shading in it and everything. Now, the, uh, the only time Okay, here is the subscribe button. I didn't show that yet. Now, if you ha are on a page with a feed, this is a clickable button. If you're on a page without a feed, like google.com, you'll see it's grayed out. If I click it, nothing happens. But if I go back to PC Mac, which does have a feed, you see it lit up a little bit, and you can click it. And when you do that, you can subscribe using the RSS reader of your choice, be it a Firefox Live bookmark, or Thunderbird, or Google Reader, or whatever else that it is that you use. Now, the feed button, uh, let me go back here, custom, yeah, tabs on top. Now, the feed button is a lot more obvious if you actually have the tabs on top. You'll see that it's lit up, but if I go to Google, watch what happens to this button here. See, it's much more easy to tell whether it's grayed out or not when you do that. So that anyway in a nutshell yeah that's pretty much it. Uh, this down arrow right here all this does is that just list all tabs if you're wondering what is that down arrow doing here and I think you could even get rid of it. Yeah you actually can. So if you didn't like that down arrow there you want it gone you can actually drag it out when you go to uh, customize and just do your crap here. And let's see, was there anything? Now I have a couple of add-ons here, like X marks. You're not going to see X marks stuff in your Firefox unless you have X marks installed. You don't have to. That's just something I use. And I think, yeah, that's about it. There's really not much else. Well, okay, you could use the separator. Now, the separator is kind of interesting. The only problem is when you use a separator that it's sometimes hard to remove. Let's just say you wanted a little line between uh, on the left and the right side of the home button. I can take this and add one here. See how I added a little vertical line? And then I'll add another one. You can add as many as you want. But taking them away, you kind of have to be a little exact about it. Uh, you can also space out the button. Oops, let me get rid of that. Try that again. Space is not exactly easy to work with. There we go. So now I have a space between. Um, if I have done, you'll see this box disappear. So I have a little space after the reload button there. 
Now the flexible space is something that really confuses the crap out of people. This is not draggable space. Everybody thinks it is. It is not. Uh, all it does is that it fills in the space which it would be otherwise blank. That's the way that that works. So if I take this flexible space and I can try to move stuff around here. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. No. And I lost my search bar in the process. <laughs> this is a, it's a trial and error thing. For All right. Oh, I'm, actually, no, I tracked away my location bar. <laughs> all right, let's put the location bar back. There we go. All right, well, all set. Um, an example of flexible space, actually, let me go down here, get rid of the separator, is here in this bar, which uh, by default is hidden. That is flexible space because there's this huge space between this and my little X marks thing all the way in the right. Now, if I take away this flexible space, you notice that now X marks the icon that's in it. It's now all the way to the left. But if I put the flexible space back, it fills in the blank space between the left and the right. It's automatic. That's how flexible space works. If you're still confused by that, I have no better way to explain it. That's essentially the way it works. All you need to know about flexible space is that it is not resizable by you. It's an automatic resizing thing. That's the way that it works. So anyway, I'm going to put Firefox back the way it was. So first I'm going to hit done. Yeah, all my menus are okay. So I will customize, restore default set, and everything's looking all copacetic. Yep. And that's the way it is. Uh, on a final note, if you do like the reload button the way it is, but you want to have that subscribe button after it, there's actually a very specific way to do it. Oops, let me get that click just right. Uh, what you do is just drag the subscribe button after the stop button. I'll show you. Right here. See where the line, that black line appears? As long as it's after the stop button, let go, done. So now I have the reload and stop the way it's supposed to look, or at least the Firefox 4-way. And then I have my subscribe button afterwards. And then if I do tabs on bottom, it has this nice arrow look to it with the uh, Windows 7. And if you're wondering how you get it to a color like this, that's my wallpaper color. I have this wallpaper here. Uh, the arrow is just, it happens to be a little purplish, bluish, there, so that's the reason it is the color it is. It's going to be transparent, whatever you currently have as your background. Uh, I think that basically covers all the basics. Pretty sure. Yeah, take it easy.